How does it feel to be at a physical film festival after all this time when we've not had, I mean, enjoyed this so much? It's amazing. Um, I actually had a movie here last year and I wasn't able to come for obvious reasons. And um, and it was, and, and it, I, the experience that I was hearing, I was getting back feedback from was just, was just really exciting. And so to be able to, to bring this new film here and at least get to sort of experience it with this kind of, with this crowd of, of the real people that, you know, I feel like connect to these kind of works. You know? now, now you've taken quite an, or, an or, unorthodox approach to making this film. Yeah. Uh, but what was the kernel of the idea that began that outline that you worked on? I think it was just the idea of like, of really just like making a movie in which even if like we lost the, the negative, that like the experience of it would have been like something that we could tell stories about forever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then also like being able to explore these these places that are kind of popular tourist, some of them popular, some of them even not even uh, tourist attractions at all in the United States and getting to kind of use those as part of our spectacle because we had such a low budget that part of what we, what we did was we used like these incredible landscapes that very few people ever film movies in to kind of, I, with the exception of maybe, you know, John Ford in the 1950s. Um, you know, it's like, ever since, you know, the, uh, the John Wayne movies of the past, it's like you to get to kind of live in these worlds and explore that and tell this genre of science fiction story through that is really exciting. Plus there were like lots of movies that inspired it, you know, everything from Starman at Close Encounters to, I was thinking about this, it's like a movie like uh, Stephen Freer's The Hit, it was like a big, it was like a big uh, movie that was an inspiration that I've always really liked. It has like kind of like visceral violence and those kind of things, but also out of interest. Though, I mean, military. obviously, yeah. a, a film is a risky endeavor in the, in the yeah. best of times, and obviously, a script helps you give at least the framework. Not having a script to work up creates more risk for the endeavor. So, what what ben, but what benefits did you find from not having that rigid script? The benefit that? was is that I had to end up writing scenes the day before we shot them. So I didn't have time to overthink it. <laughs> no, I mean we went into it with like, one, there was there was definitely like a, a scriptment, I guess you would say, where you'd have like huge chunks that were tightly scripted and pretty much verbatim of what's in the movie. And there were other parts where it allowed the actors to kind of like let the experience that they were having inform what was going on in the scene. And in some cases, um, they you know Bria and AJ would come up with with um, dialogue and and, and scenarios in which you probably wouldn't have ever come up with it just sitting behind a computer and writing it, you know? In that sense then, so what did you discover in the edit that wasn't evident in the, the writing and the producing of it? Oh, wow. Well, I discovered that I have about an hour of movie that are these great sort of tangents that are already cut and everything, and that you could kind of, you know, if it's something that people are a fan of, if people end up liking this movie enough to like, and we want to put it on a Blu-ray, it's like there's a whole... There's like these derivations that kind of take us off of the main story track that are actually kind of really interesting little scenes in and of themselves, little vignettes, but felt for the movie it just needed to kind of... I wanted to kind of dispense with um, a lot of the boring parts of movies and get to the kind of broad surling, you know, I have this kind of thing of like Twilight Zone, if you can't get it done, if you can't get as much done as they do in 22 minutes of a Twilight Zone episode, then you're doing something wrong. You're, yeah. a, you're a tough taskmaster on yourself. Well, you know, but uh, yeah, and and they, and, and the other the other thing I've discovered was that you know, I the minute I put a camera up to my uh, eye, I tend to lose all sense of my own personal safety. So we were shooting on the edge of the Grand Canyon, and I was trying to get the shots. Sorry, I didn't mean to fall out of your shot. I was trying to get the perfect shot, and they were literally like grabbing me because I would have fallen off the edge of the, the thing. It's just because I'm just like, all I care about is the shot. Yeah. So. Well, look, on that thought, I thank you for spending your time with Fright Fest TV. Thank you, Stuart. I appreciate it.